Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I'm canning blueberries. We are canning it the most simple way humanly possible, well, almost the simplest way humanly possible. Uh, we're canning it with just basic, we're doing raw pack with a medium syrup. And that syrup is gonna be four cups of water and three cups of sugar. I use the organic sugar from Costco. You can use whatever kind you typically use. That's just what we use around here. So all I'm gonna do, I already have the four cups of water in here. So we're gonna put three cups of water in here. And then all we're gonna do with this, I'm gonna put it on the stove, I'm gonna give it a stir, and we're gonna kinda let it warm up and we wanna get it nice and hot. Because even though it's a raw pack, the liquid that we pour on top of it should be hot. I know that most people tend to package these in the quart size jars and oftentimes they'll do it as like a like an actual pie filling. I'm doing it in the pint size jars. It gives us me a little bit more versatility with what I can do with it. You know, if, if you know, Robert or I just want to have it out as a snack or if we want to put it in another recipe or something like that, it doesn't kind of force us to have to open a big giant jar of blueberries. It's just Robert and I here now. And so it's just kind of got to keep it pretty simple and, and small. <laughs> we don't want to overwhelm ourselves and and possibly make food go bad when I could just package it in this and it would be just fine. Prob this is the first time I've actually canned blueberries, so probably the next time maybe I'll be I'll feel a little bit more comfortable doing it in the larger size jars once I figure out how we actually want to use this. And uh, so with the blueberries, I went ahead, with the jars rather, I went ahead and sanitized them. I don't think I need to because I believe this is a 15 minute processing time. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to look it up just before I actually do this. But I believe if I recall, it was a 15 minute processing time and anything over 15 minutes and over does not need to be, you don't need to sanitize the jars, but I did just in case because it's like right on the border of what is recommended for what you sanitize and what you don't need to. And so I'd rather be safe than sorry and I sanitize. I got the big packs of the two pounds. These are each two pounds of blueberries. So I got the big pack when I was at Costco. So, you know, they're pretty clean. They're pretty picked through, but some of them do still have the stems on there. And I'm sure there, there could be some gross funky ones in there. So I'm gonna dump these in the colander and I'm gonna kind of pick through them, sort through them and make sure that what's left is, you know, to the best of my ability is good clean ones. And then we'll go from there. Now, all we're gonna do with this is we're just, I have clean hands and we're just gonna put it in the jar. You can do what is called a hot pack. And I may do that sometime in the future. I might do a video on that. But basically what we're doing with this is we're just putting the berries in there raw, uncooked. And one of the things that will happen with this is that it will event like in the canning process that'll they'll cut some of them will burst some of them will you know just for whatever reason in the canning process these are going to uh like kind of condense a little bit and they're gonna float if you do the raw pack it's much less likely that they'll float or pardon me if you do the the uh the hot pack method but I don't have the time and I don't care enough to do it. So I'm just gonna do it this way. My jars are in a cupboard. I don't look at them. They're not like on display. I don't give them away to people. You know, I would, but I don't. So I don't care if they float, it's not a big deal. Some people care and that is totally fine. For my purposes, it makes absolutely no difference. It would just drive me crazy and an extra step that I don't need to do. But someday I might, so stay tuned. So I'm just trying to kind of get as much down in the jar as I can. I don't want to squish them because I mean, I want the blueberries to stay as intact as possible. So we're just kind of going for about one, a, a half an inch, pardon me, a half an inch headspace. The headspace is less important with the fruit, more important with the liquid that you pour on top of it. All right. So now we have our brine warm. I don't know if this is gonna be enough, but I just didn't wanna make a tremendous amount more. I'd rather make it twice than have a bunch left over because I don't have anything else that I need to can with the syrup today. So I just don't wanna waste it. It only takes a minute to warm up, so. So you'll have to excuse the noise in the background. I'm sanitizing the jars for another project, but 
So all we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna take our debubbler and we're gonna kind of go around the jar and just try and get in all the nooks and crannies with, you don't wanna crush the blueberries. You wanna be very careful with the blueberries. But we're gonna kind of just go around the jar, kind of give it a little, just a little push against the jar, nothing crazy. You know, we just wanna get the air out without squishing the, the, uh, the blueberries. And we're just gonna do that to all of these. Okay, so next what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that each jar is at a half an inch of head space. And we're gonna do that by just, you know, making sure that everything is submerged underneath the brine. And you can do that a couple of different ways. I have this little handy tool. I just recently bought it. I've gone my entire time of canning. I never actually had this one. And, but I finally went and got it. It was like a buck. So I was just like, all right, fine, I'll get it. And so there's all these little notches and you can see it's, you know, there's an inch, three quarter, uh, half and then a quarter and so we're going for the half inch so we just put this on the rim of the jar and make sure you know put it vertically and then just make sure that it is you know make sure that it's meeting that point another way that you can do it is basically this bottom the bottom of this rim is one inch and then this if you're looking at the front right where the the threads meet and then you've got the half inch and then you have the quarter of an inch but I don't know how necessarily how accurate that is, um, but I'm told that you can do that. So then what you do is you just take vinegar water. I don't know how necessarily how important it is for the vinegar on this part, but I still do it on pretty much anything that I'm wiping off. And you're just gonna wipe off the rim, make sure there's nothing on it. And then we're gonna take a brand new lid and we're gonna put it on the jar. And then we're gonna put the band on there. And we're going to tighten it fingertip tight. And what I found to be true for that is that you just take these three fingers, however tight you can reasonably get it with just the tips of these fingers, not cranking it down. You want it to be loose enough to where in the processing in the canner, the oxygen can get out, but nothing can get back in basically. So uh, our water over there is nice and hot. And so we're just going to take this one by one and put them in the canner. So that is accurate uh, with the half an inch mark is if you're looking, let me show you right here, up close, just to make sure. Okay, so you have this ring here, right? And you have this bottom ring. The bottom of this ring is one inch. And then here you have the center here, you know, you wanna make sure they're all lined up here. And then the bottom of this center ring, that the bottom part of it is a half an inch. So most likely the bottom part of this one is gonna be a quarter of an inch. So take it for what you will. I just measured it and the bottom of this is a half an inch. Okay, so then vinegar, water, wipe it off, make sure there's no particles on there. ring, fingertip tight, into the canner. And so we're just gonna do all the rest of these real quick. So we can just move along. And if you happen to get too much in the, can the jar, you can always just scoop it out with a spoon. Okay, so now that the jars are actually filled and loaded into the canner, what I'm gonna do now, I have too much water in there. It was just kind of guessing. And so I'm gonna scoop some of that out. And um, and I also wanted to make sure to point out that that was almost a perfect amount of, of syrup that we used for this. And the recipe that I used was for a medium syrup and it was four cups of water, three cups of, um, of sugar, and then we got seven of the pints 
of blueberries. So that seemed to be a perfect ratio. There's just a teeny bit left over. There's just enough left over for error. And so that was a perfect amount. So use that if you're gonna follow this recipe at all. So now I'm just gonna pull out some water. We want one inch above each of the jars, and then we're gonna crank the heat up and let it boil away. So I put the lid on there and now it's getting ready to come up to a boil. Once it does boil, at that point, once it's rolling boil, we're gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. And once the 15 minutes is off, we're gonna turn the heat off, let it set for five minutes, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so now that the five minutes, the can canning process is totally finished, we waited our five minutes, now we're gonna pull them out of our can. see just a nice beautiful jar of blueberries and you can see the bottom here I don't know if you can see but it's it's pretty obvious here but there's probably like three quarters of an inch at the bottom uh yeah now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna let this thing kind of just chill out okay so I went to actually edit this video and realized that I totally forgot to let you guys know how these blueberries are in the end uh, so I have one jar here that we're going to open up and then I'm probably going to make it into some kind of a dessert this evening for Robert, but I wanted to let you guys know how everything was, how the texture was and just kind of how everything turned out. I have not opened any of these just yet. I went, I have a bunch of pineapple from like 2017 that I have to go through. And so I've been kind of working through those before I actually go through the stuff that I can this year. Uh, cause that's not why I canned it was not necessarily for immediate consumption. It was to consume later on. So here we go. Well, let you guys kind of see. It's definitely, it's kind of like a, it's dark. <laughs> I don't know. You can't even see anything on camera. There we go. Hmm. Okay. It's definitely like, it turned into like a brick of sorts in there. They're mushy. It smells divine though. Oh, I can make some really, really tasty stuff with this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try this out. It has absolutely no blueberry shape to it whatsoever. Mm. But it definitely has blueberry flavor to it. It's really good. This is definitely not something that you would probably want to like submit at the fair. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong with it, but there's like zero, absolutely zero shape to it at all. What did I do wrong? See, you can see it's just like, it's a blob. Blueberry blob. Oh, there are some at the bottom that kind of have a flavor shape to it. See, you can see one. It's fantastic. It tastes delicious. You could definitely, this uh, one that you could use for, um, probably mostly for throwing in desserts, like cobblers and crumbles and crisps and pies and things like that. This will go pretty darn well in it. You could also use it, you could use the juice to make some kind of like cocktails or for fermenting. You could add it as like a flavor to any of your fermented things as long as, I mean, you can't just ferment this jar. Like you wouldn't be able to do that, but you could add add the flavoring to something that is fermented. Like if you have a starter culture, like a ginger bug or something like that, you could use this to flavor the ginger bug once it's fermented, like as a se second, ferment ferment second fermentation type of thing. That would be just amazing. So um, this is fermenting blueberries. I don't, or not fermenting blueberries. <laughs> this is canning blueberries. I'm not really sure why there's no like it really just zapped the shape right out of these things. I don't know, maybe I maybe they were a little bit old or something like that. I'm not really too sure. If you guys have any ideas on ways that you like to can blueberries and you have had successfully canned blueberries where they have mostly kept their shape, let me know in the comment section below. We would all love to benefit from your knowledge and your experience. I would love it. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned something or were inspired to try something, go ahead and make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.